so a couple of weeks ago we we're doing a video on the weights of uh, yeah, the cargo carrying capacity and while I was talking about and showing people just you know that we don't really carry a lot of junk I end up opening one of the bays and it's freaking flooding with water this is gonna be an exciting one to open because we actually discovered I had a water leak in here uh, look at this Wow 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 in capture it in real time folks you think we would have checked this it just didn't didn't seem that uh, that much now I have fixed it Sue if you want to zoom in here I had to replace all four of these lines here that come across I added a couple valves and then the lines go up okay and I guess the reason I'm showing you this is uh, normally I don't fix anything and normally I always hope that something falls apart uh, when I'm near National Indoor RV and I didn't think I'd be able to make it that I could end up having too much damage or something so I had to fix it myself and it was one of those jobs that I was actually able to do it myself. What a mess. <laughs> well, we made a mess. We're, we're blaming it on the repair. But I needed PEX A, which is a much more flexible and higher burst pressure, um, more forgiving to on the way to freezing, uh, that you might get away with not having some damage. So I had to order 100 feet to fix what I thought was going to be a small section. But like any good job, once you start cutting away, you know, if I would have ordered 10 feet, let's call that 2 feet, 4 feet, 6 feet, 8, I would have been to the point where I start to have a nervous breakdown that I wasn't going to do the job. I had to have a good day with my spine and my back because I had to replace those four tubes that are off to the right there and dig way down in and I was uh, pretty much physically at the end of my abilities. So I have never did any work with PEX. This was my first time. I ended up buying this tool. It's an Apollo. It's a ratcheting crimper and you just ratchet it. You can see that there's this ratchet mechanism. And when you finally get to where you're gonna need to be, if I was, if I had a ring in there right now, you see how that light turned blue? If I had a ring in there, it would have turned blue at the right time, said, hey Mark, you're done. I also bought the cheap tubing cutter to cut it uh, square to the world. What I've got going right now is I'm trying to eliminate the uh, different things that can be causing my gray tank leak and today you'll notice I have a garden hose set up that goes out my fire escape window and let me go outside and show you what I'm going to do so today of course it's 95 degrees outside which I guess is better than 25 degrees but what I'm trying to determine is if in fact I have a gray tank leak you can see right on center screen on the corner of this tank I have a little trail of leakage and when I go on the other side I'll show you that there and what I've been doing and I can show on screen I've been taking this pole with a selfie stick on it and I've been sticking it down into this tank area up above the tank and way along the top here and looking over the frame rails at first I thought these fittings that are in the foreground these four fittings I thought well this will be an easy fix it's one of those four guess what it's not any of those four and when I call Numar for help 
they only show two fittings on their drawings. So I decided I needed some more answers. So I took a GoPro camera with a light and I mounted it to a selfie stick and I ran the camera along the bulkhead wall. Now what you just looked at there was the first pocket you come to that goes through the gray tank and that is to provide clearance for that passenger side rail. And it doesn't look like anything was leaking there. So as I continued along the wall, the next frame rail I come to is the driver's side frame rail and it sits in its pocket. But the complication here is these power steering and air conditioning hoses that have to be snuck uh, past the gray tank to be able to get to the front of the rig. And I'm going to hang my hat on the fact that there's some rubbing or something that went on over the years on the edge of this tank. And that, in fact, is my leak. Now, in a moment, I'm going to start pulling this camera back. Remember, this is the driver's side frame rail. And it will show you a little bit better shot looking down into this pocket. But that's not the side, apparently, that has the abrasion and is leaking. I actually have to come over the rail a little bit more towards the center of the coach uh, before you see the wet area that seems to be under and a little bit inboard from where the power steering and air conditioning hosing is. When I called Numar about the lead time on a gray tank, and in fact a black and a water tank, because I have a 2014 Numar Dutstar, they're not held in stock anymore. And it actually has to be ordered from the tank manufacturer and put into their production schedule. Now I realize that if I order these and I don't end up needing a tank, it's on me. But I couldn't see any other way to do this and not impacting our travels and all of our plans literally for the next month and a half. Now, after I had fixed this leak here that I had showed you, I erroneously had thought that some of the piping was carrying water into there. And I, in fact, was getting some leakage in the pegboard bay because of that. And I know there's many of you out there who say, no, 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 Mark, that's not what it is. The leak actually is right here, that pipe that exits your water tank. And when you're bouncing around, the water splashes out of that overflow and comes out the bottom of the rig right there. And I could tell you that that has not been a problem on my rig. I've checked that a number of times. I actually did a video about this pegboard uh, area getting wet, typically down in the corners down here along the bottom and I would see water on the top of the water tank like you see right now that has dried up. That was a virtual lake a few days ago. And I attributed it to water coming in up over the top here and way in the back, which you can't see real good, but you can see the frame rail where that wire goes through. Visualize the two C channels coming through that bulkhead and on IRV2, which is where all the knowledge for RVing uh, typically ends up getting resided, especially after everybody figures everything out. I did a video where inside these wheel wells, and I show it a lot better in the video, I'm certainly not going to reshoot it now, but I sprayed the inside of those wheel wells with a flex rubber and I did it on both sides, and I would have this leak mysteriously go away. Now the funny thing about mysterious 
leaks that go away, if you don't have a real good definitive answer on why it went away, you actually still have the leak, you just don't know about it. And I thought for sure, with the times that in this bay here, that I addressed the bulkhead issue back here with the wheel wells, or when I addressed the area over here where I did the repair on what's called the air admittance valve in the bathrooms, I thought I had solved that mystery. And every once in a while, when I would have rain, uh, water on the top of this tank here that I thought was coming from this bulkhead leaking, it coincidentally happened many times after I had driven in rain. And I've had plenty of issues that only happened during rain, like my ABS light every once in a while going on, or back behind the uh, uh, tandem axles here, I have some kind of a control module for my Allison transmission that every once in a while acts up and if it does it's usually during rain and I have that checked every time I go to a Freightliner. So I guess what I'm saying is this leak has eluded me. So I'm going to show you today's experiment. Today's experiment is over on this side. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to monitor the amount of water that's going into my gray tank. I want to put it in remotely with a hose so that I'm not using any of the plumbing in the RV in case it's the plumbing that's leaking. Where it's leaked in the past is where that red wire connector is, the black, right in the corner there you can see it'll just start dripping eventually. And it also ends up dripping from right above you can see that the edge of this plywood board. So that plywood board is supporting the gray tank. Maybe be a good time to show you that this drain here uh, is something that you want to make sure never gets plugged up. And what we use, and these are in our Amazon store, we use these very fine screens and we let them just lay right on the output and for the most part that has really worked well on IRV2 I saw again for the 50th time people talking about this toy here and it is a stream machine toy streammachine.com I believe we actually have this in our Amazon store. And I use this baby by uh, sucking up fresh water. And I would just pump a number of times down here with this thing. And it worked amazingly well cleaning that. I know all the stories about the baking soda trick and vinegar. I had limited success with that. When I use that plunger to force water, it's not air, you're squirting water in there. Uh, it worked amazing. Resist the urge to ever put anything down that drain to retrieve hair. Because behind this vent here is the piping that is impossible to get at for your shower. But nonetheless, you'll be able to see that there's a HEPVO valve in there. I think it's H-E-P-V-O, and it's a valve that can lay horizontally that has a ribbon in it that's twisted, and the water goes through the ribbon. It's called a duck bill. If you stick something down your shower to try to retrieve hair, something like this, you are gonna hate yourself. Never, never stick anything like that down that shower you will destroy that HEPFO valve. This is the gray tank here. And because of this ridge right here, you can't put this sea level gauge on until this point. So on this giant tank here, for the first inch and three quarters, I can't measure what's in there. And that's why with a grain of salt, any rig you buy, you have to learn 
the peculiarities of how this monitoring system works. All right, my save a drop gauge says I've got 20 gallons in there. Let's go see what the sea level gauge says. If my theory is correct, it is going to be leaking shortly. It's kind of bouncing between 25% and 19. So this is one of those times I wish I wasn't right, but at 20% fill factor in the uh, gray tank, I have this leak. So let me show you the little rain gutter system that I put in that hopefully is going to be doing the trick for us. So let's take a look at the temporary invention here. This is pipe insulation that is slit down the uh, cut that they provide and it's a section that's probably five feet long it goes all along the angle that is supporting the gray tank the gray tank angle has a slight angle to it so that the tank sits at an angle and I just have it held in place by a batten that I zip tied to the pipe strapping to hold it in place so this is the rate that the water is leaking at right now. It's going through my rain gutter and at least it's going now somewhere where I can keep track of it. You can see up above I've got that wood furring strip that's holding this flexible furnace tubing that is just kind of splayed open to be able to capture what's ever drooling off that angle and obviously I just don't have this uh, paper towel here. I got a bucket under it, a kind of a flat bucket, but I wanted to be able to show the rate at which it's leaking right now. I have maybe 20% in the tank, and that's when about the leak starts. So this is what it looks like when you're sort of running out of options. I studied everything I could study, I looked at every drawing I could find, and I was starting to run out of options. So I decided that what I was going to do was post a question on the IRV2 website and hope that one of the resident experts on there would read something in the Numar forum and give me some help. These are the two photographs that I took with arrows that show where the leaks are coming from. Now in the past I've always talked about how useful IRV2.com is and I've always warned people not to ask questions on it because pretty much everything has been asked already and you really owe it to yourself and all the other people on the forums and on the site to not ask the same question a thousand times. But I can tell you that after researching it for many hours, I could not find anything on the issue that I was having with my gray tank leak. If you're not familiar how IRV2.com works, you might want to type in gray tank crack IRV2 just in the Google search box and you'll see the write-up that I did and how detailed I suggest you are in your write-up with pictures so that the folks on the forum got a chance to be able to help you. So you gotta ask yourself, how has this story ended? And is it a happy ending? Well, you know, sometimes the happy ending takes a while. And so far, I got kind of a happy middle of the job. Uh, it would be an understatement if I told you that this job didn't really beat me down. And if you watched the video this far, you saw all of the work I had to do to analyze what it was and come up with a plan. And as far as I was concerned, I only had uh, four choices. Throw my RV away, sell it to somebody unsuspecting, Get it fixed at Numar, which is impossible 
because the lead time is you know pushing nine months and the only time you can get in is the nonsense to drive from Florida to Napanee in February you know not worry about um, uh, snowstorms or National Indoor RV. Now I didn't call them immediately because I had written this IRV2 question to see if one of the uh, genius people that typically reply on here would say, oh my god, I found out that your leak typically on this type of thing is here or there. And I did actually do that in the past and I talked about that in the video that I sequentially systematically uh, repaired all these leaks along the way and the leaking never stopped. So I was to the point where I had to write this letter and lo and behold uh, as if Brett doesn't have enough to do running the businesses that he runs he reads this and he can see the quandary I was in and because we've been a customer on record and he's able to retrieve our phone numbers he called me at seven o'clock in the morning it's central time he thought he was doing me a solid by calling me at eight o'clock because my address is in Florida and uh, Sue roused me out of bed I just about broke my legs getting in here you know to uh, answer the call Mark Mark wake up Wake up, National Indoor Call. What? Mark, wake up. National Indoor just called. Mark, Brett Davis just called. Get up. Betty Davis? What? What are you talking about? Mark, Brett Davis just called. Get up. Brett Davis? Get up. Oh my god. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, I gotta get going. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, oh. Whew. Oh, I gotta, I gotta wake up. I, I gotta call the CEO to Angel Indoor. I could, oh, you're an angel. I could use a coffee. Let's get going on this call. Hello. And in a matter of minutes, uh, Brett was concerned enough and had some options for me that he gets on the phone the general manager of the uh, Atlanta Georgia store Todd Springs and I'm telling you inside of 20 minutes not more than a half an hour on the phone we had a plan which way we're going forward and I already had an appointment at, on October 8th for some unrelated work I'm gonna have some tires put on and things and we just piled on all this additional work and I was able to uh, order the three tanks because even though I just got one tank that I think is leaking I'm not taking all this old 10 year old plastic apart and expecting it to go in right so I ordered three tanks uh, preemptively so that the lead time of four or five weeks until we get there is spent the tanks being produced put through the order process these tanks aren't something that are kept in stock especially on a rig my age so hopefully when I get there the tanks will be there we're gonna rip the whole wet bay out Sue and I are going to capture the whole fun story on film for you guys to watch to see what it's really like to own one of these things you know we live in this thing every single minute of the year and uh, you know for the folks that are sitting at home and they're wondering about all the money you got to pour into this I think you have to be honest with yourself the periodic times where the home that you're living in has the same type of issues and yes it is a little harder to spend it on something that's a depreciating asset like this but it is what it is so we'll keep you up to date and for you to know when this video actually happens because it's going to happen a number of weeks after we're there in uh, our October 8th 2023 appointment I suggest that you subscribe ring the notification bell and that way you won't miss when exciting unbelievably dramatic videos like this post so until we see you in a campground or see you on the road someday Let's just count on seeing you every Sunday or every other Sunday when we publish. So until then, take care.